Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and today we're going to be taking a closer look at the water moccasin, nicknamed the cottonmouth. They're the only subaquatic pit viper in the world, one of the most incredible pit viper species in the whole of the South United States. Let's go. The swamps of South Louisiana are home to a whole stack of different wildlife, many considered to be dangerous to people. The cottonmouth. Also called the water moccasin, this snake has one of the worst reputations around, and they're the snake that I probably have gotten the most experience with, due to them being so common down here. On today's adventure, we're going to see every shape, color, and subspecies of the cottonmouth around, and seeing why these snakes have such a bad reputation. Here we go. Got a little moccasin right here. Snake hook's a bit big to handle. It's alright. I might be able to get him up on the stick. He's very active. Now, I don't think he's gonna let me. Now, as you can see, he's still got a little bit of patterning to him right here, but this would not be considered a baby. As you can see, he no longer has that yellow tail, and oftentimes they can keep their coloration until they're about medium size to almost an adult in this certain area. Now of course here, they're mostly going to turn the solid black dingy color, but uh, this one's actually kept his pattern for a bit longer. Here we go. Good boy. Look at that. Alright. Now water moccasins will kind of range in attitude, but uh, they're all a little bit grumpy. They all don't really like to be messed with, and this one's really quick to get out of my way, but he's not very bitey. He's, open, he's only opened his mouth a couple of times, and he's pretty relaxed. They're a very fat bodied snake, so uh, lifting it up with a stick doesn't really work for the ones that get a little bit bigger, but it works really well with the little ones. He's really cute. They've got this band running right across their eye, and uh, it's a real distinct facial look for a cottonmouth. The only thing I can say that's kind of similar is the copperhead, but very cute little guy, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and move him off the path in a second, and uh, we're going to keep looking for more. All right, see you, buddy. Off you get. Boop, boop, boop. Come on, get off the trail. Ooh, moccasin. Oh, he's gorgeous. Is a hole right there? Right along this tree. Come here, bud. It's okay. Oh, you're gorgeous. Oops. Have a look at you. You've got all your colors, don't you? You've got all your colors. Now, as you can see, this snake isn't a newborn baby. It's a bump smaller than the last one that we filmed, but he's got all of his different patterns to him. You're okay. I like to keep him nice and gentle. Look at that. See, he's perfectly calm. This is probably the most docile one that we've found so far. And I just want to show you guys as many moccasins as we can to where you get really good at identifying them. Because uh, as you can see here, they can vary in their color. They can vary in their body structure. And you want to be able to identify every kind that there is. Now this wouldn't be like a subspecies or anything like that. It's just a slightly different coloration. But this slight color change can make it extremely difficult for people to identify them. And have a look at that. He's completely calm now. Not trying to get away from me. Obviously, he still wants to get away. But he's not stressed out. No need to stress the snake out. No need for me to pick him up. A snake this small could uh, still envenomate me pretty bad and could potentially kill me. Water moccasins have venom similar to that of a rattlesnake, like a, like a low potency rattlesnake. And these guys can definitely kill people. All right, buddy. Go ahead and set you down, and we're going to let you on your way. Here you go, bud. Back by your tree. With western moccasins, the younger the moccasin, the more banding they'll typically have. And as they get older, those bands fade, and they become a darker black coloration. And in this area, there's some super dark colored ones. So hopefully we'll get a chance to see some of those. We also get lots of non-venomous snakes around here, like water snakes, which look a lot like cottonmouths. If I'm going to get one, I've got to be quick. Broadbanded. He whooped me. Water snakes and cottonmouths are pretty hard to get if they're at the water's edge. However, if you find them in other areas a decent ways away from water, they're pretty slow compared to other snake species. 
Oh, that's a water snake. All right. Cool. <laughs> He's biting me. <laughs> Look at that. Well, this is non-venomous, but this is a broad-banded water snake. Now, I always have to take a good look at these snakes before I pick them up because they do look a lot like water moccasins. And he's biting me again. It's a good thing they are non-venomous. I wouldn't pick them up if it was a venomous snake, obviously. They actually have something called an anticoagulant in their saliva. It helps to bleed out any kind of prey. So it basically causes a lot more blood flow. Water snake bites are gonna draw a lot more blood than a normal snake because it's basically keeping your body from clotting the, uh, the bite. But I can definitely see why people mix up these snakes for moccasins. They look very similar, but these guys are completely harmless. So we're gonna go ahead and let this little guy go. All right, see you, buddy. Back to finding some water. The next day, we're back on our search for cotton miles, and we're hoping to see some of the bigger ones found around here, and to see their attitudes and colorations compared to the ones we've found so far. So what we're in right now, this is kind of like a floodplain, and this is the perfect place to find moccasins. Uh, been seeing them everywhere here. There's a tail. Water snake or water moccasin? It's a water moccasin. Look at size one. Have a look at this guy. This one's a bump bigger than the last one that we found. Uh, that's okay. Now he's starting to get that solid black coloration. Huh? That's alright, bud. He's not coiling up. Many moccasins, when you first mess with them, will coil up and open that mouth. But many of them will also take off like this. Now he's not a solid black coloration. You can tell that he's still got a little bit of banding. But this would be a slightly larger moccasin, but this would not be a full grown. This one's probably about two and a half to three feet. An adult moccasin ranges from four, four and a half to five feet long. Now a five foot moccasin is massive. They're not a fast snake by any means, but in the environment that they live in, uh, they really don't need to be. Now, these moccasins are gonna be cruising along here, looking for frogs, fish, water's all back in here. And this is a floodplain, so all of this was actually underwater just a few weeks ago. And this is gonna be the number one snake that it's gonna be in, that's gonna be inhabiting all this. You really have to watch your step. We've seen quite a few smaller ones just sitting there perfectly coiled up and they're very, very easy to step on. Very easy. He doesn't like us messing with him whatsoever. He doesn't like us being near him, and you can see that he's trying to get away from me. Now, if he takes off right now and comes straight at me, that's not him trying to bite me. That's not him attacking me. That's him trying to get away from me. And he really doesn't have any sense in that, meaning he's not thinking, uh, I'm gonna try and fake him out and chase him. No, he's thinking, get away from this guy. I don't like him. Moccasins have a really bad attitude in some cases, but they just don't chase people. This is the number one thing you hear with moccasins is that they'll chase people. And if he comes at me right now, it's not because he's chasing me. It's not because he's trying to bite me or anything like that. It's because I'm in the way of his what he sees as his escape path. And that's where there's some confusion with people. But as you can see, if I stand over him, he's just going to try to move away. Cotton mouths are oftentimes called an aggressive species, but that's not technically true. Like many other pit viper species, cotton mouths will defend themselves by either getting out of your way or curling up with their mouth open. The big difference with water moccasins is they're the best at it, and they know it. Moccasins know they have venom, and they don't want to be killed or eaten, so they coil up when confronted, open their mouth, and shake their tail. If that's not enough to scare their predator away, they'll start crawling away to find water whether the person is in their way or not. Before this video continues anymore, I just wanted to tell you guys, we now have merch. The link will be in the description, but we have three different shirt designs. This is my favorite one, the rattlesnake design. We also have just a regular Life's Wild Adventures logo, as well as a gator design. So if you like any of those designs and you wanna support the channel, please head on down to the link. We have very limited availability right now, so if you do want one, act fast. And it's the best way to support the channel right now, so if you're enjoying this, please go ahead and do that. And with that out of the way, let's get back to the video. Now, it's time to hit the gravel roads and head towards some areas I've seen some bigger ones hanging out. Cotton miles will oftentimes be seen crossing roads, and I've seen quite a few in this area in particular. And of course, lots of other snake species will be doing the exact same thing. Is that a rat snake? It's kind of fat. They normally don't turn around that fast. Whoa! He's not happy. It's alright, this is a non-venomous snake. This is... It's okay, bud. <laughs> this is a Mississippi green water. 
goodness, he tagged me a bunch during that. He was pretty accurate. This is a fat, healthy one, too. It's okay. It's all right. Water snakes are definitely known for their nasty attitude, and Mississippi greens are no exception. Mississippi greens have a pretty bad attitude when they're messed with. However, they are a non-venomous species, and they'll only bite and they only mess with people when you mess with them, when you pick them up like this. See, I'm going and picking him up. You know, he doesn't know that I'm just coming up to him to see him, show him to you guys, and get him off the road. He thinks I'm trying to kill him and eat him. He doesn't really understand the fact that we're not out to get him. So he's trying to defend himself, which perfectly fine, perfectly right, and I get bit by non-venomous snakes all the time. If it's a non-venomous snake, I really don't care. If it's a venomous one, you're not gonna see me handling it. You're not gonna see me getting bit by it. Notice the way he looks at my head. This is something that oftentimes more intelligent snakes will do. Racer snakes, coach whips, and some water snake species will do this, but they aim at the face of their predator. And if you can imagine, if I took a bite to the face right now, that would deter me pretty quickly. In fact, we'd probably finish up our segment a little bit earlier because of that. And he knows that. He knows that the best way to get me to put him down is to bite me on the face somewhere. He also sees my mouth and everything up here that could be deadly to him, something that could bite him. So he's trying to very carefully figure out a way to get me to put him down. And that's what snakes do. This guy has no other defense right now than to musk and bite. Really cool snake, really fat, really healthy. Mississippi greens are one of the less common water snakes in this area specifically. Normally you're gonna get mostly diamondback water snakes and yellow belly water snakes here. So it's cool to see a Mississippi green here. Very angry snake, so we're gonna go ahead and Almost bit me right there. We're gonna go ahead and get this little guy off the road and keep looking. There's some waterways back here, and that's probably where he was heading to from over here. So we're gonna send him right back in the direction he was going. You always want to do that with snakes. No, it's okay. Don't bite me. Go go. Go go snake. Water snakes will live in pretty much the same habitats as moccasins, so we knew for a fact that there had to be some close by. But as we followed this little greenie off the road, we got to see just how close. Right there. He's not even taking off. <laughs> He's just sitting there. Oh my gosh, that's a moccasin. This is what makes this snake so dangerous here in Louisiana. I'm gonna make sure there's no more around because he was camouflaged. Hang on, let me get a bigger stick. I can just wrangle him with two. Oh. It's alright, bud. It's alright. Come here. Come here, dude. Hello. Have a look at that viper. Woo -hoo -hoo. That is a cottonmouth. This is the most common snake out here. We were just following that little green snake down, getting some last little shots of him. And this moccasin was sitting perfectly coiled up. Nice fat western moccasin. Very dark colored. He's gonna stay nice and calm. That stick was terrible. Sticks are a really good way to handle the snake. And they're normally pretty calm. If you're not getting them off the road, they're just sitting coiled up like this. They're gonna be nice and cooled off. This is an incredibly dangerous snake for the exact reasons that you just saw. I walked right up to him and I didn't even see him. Incredible. We were just getting that little greenie off the road. Oh, it's okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put him back, right back where he was. Whoop, that stick was awful. All right. Well, there we have it. That's what makes the water moccasin such a dangerous snake. Just getting that little greenie off the road. Almost stepped on him. That's crazy. Cotton miles in Louisiana are one thing. But what about other parts of the U.S.? On our trip down to Florida, we got a chance to check out the Florida moccasin. This one right here was an absolute whopper, probably around four to four and a half feet in length. You'll notice that these moccasins have a slightly different shaped head, and the even bigger ones keep their banding as they get older. This is also due to them living in cleaner water in this area. Once we got some shots, we moved this one right off the road, but she wasn't too thrilled with being messed with, and she stayed perfectly coiled up, even after we got her back in the water. Later that evening, we got a chance to see a much smaller one that looked more like your typical Florida moccasin. Don't go nowhere, bud. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. Have a look at this snake. Now you can tell they look quite a bit different. Ooh. It's all right. I need you to stay in the road just for a minute. Now, Florida moccasins look a bit different than ours in Louisiana. They're a completely different subspecies. These snakes get a lot bigger. He's got a much cleaner pattern. They've got a narrower head. There's a bunch of differences between these snakes, and they're also a bit more sluggish on land. This snake 
definitely could put a lot of venom in you. Cotton mouths can be dangerous. They are a dangerous snake. Hello. Notice how he's very whippy on land. He's very whippy. Cotton mouths are a very whippy snake in general, but the ones here in Florida are very sluggish on land. And that's because they're very used to the slow moving water. That's how they spend their entire day. So on land, they're just terrible at moving around. Florida moccasins are really interesting. They definitely have some really cool colorations here, but for now, we're just gonna let this guy on his way. Now let's take a look at an eastern cottonmouth we found on our trip to coastal North Carolina. This subspecies is found along the east coast of areas more north of Florida. They share a lot of traits with the Florida moccasins, keeping their patterns more into adulthood. Have a look at this. It's a cottonmouth. This right here is an eastern cottonmouth. Eastern cottonmouths are very much like the western cottonmouth, but they have a lot more banding, a lot more color to them, even as they get bigger. They kind of keep their baby colorations in a sense. Still the same white mouth, fat little snake. Now, they look a little bit more similar to the Florida moccasin than the western, because they do have more of their colors. There are some slight variations to them. If I get bit by this snake, that would be a really, really rough ride. Could even kill you. But uh, they don't have the most potent venom out of all the snakes. You know, it's a pretty, halfway decent venom, but it's not super, super potent. Just like all pit vipers, they've got pits right in the front of their face, and they can use that to sense warm-blooded animals. However, they'll also be eating a lot of frogs, uh, other snakes they'll eat out here, and even things like lizards and smaller stuff like that. So they're a really cool snake. I see these guys all the time back home, but uh, this one's a little bit different because it's here in North Carolina. It's an eastern, so very cool snake to see, and uh, we're just going to leave this guy to uh, crawl off the road. Very cool. See you, buddy. Now back to Louisiana, we're heading to an area where I've seen some of the biggest, gnarliest looking moccasins around, to show that habitat and location play a big role in these snakes' appearance. What's unfortunate is the area that these moccasins live is surrounded by residential areas, and the illegal dumping here draws a lot of these venomous snakes closer to where people live. If you want my best advice for how to keep these snakes out of your yard, don't leave things out for them to hide under. Out here in New Orleans East, there is a lot of junk everywhere, and that attracts snakes, mostly rattlesnakes and moccasins. Yep, that's about right, big moccasin. Big old western cop. Yep, have a look at that, right under there. This is the most common snake out here. It's kind of morning time-ish, so they're not super active, and I think it's just gonna stay on the hook for me. This is a decent sized one, not as big as they do get, I've seen them about twice the size out here, but this is a pretty nice sized one. Nub tail, and you can see how dark those colorations are compared to the other moccasins. Western moccasins have a really, really dingy color, mostly for uh, camouflage purposes, because here there's a lot of swamp and stuff rather than leaf litter for them to hide in. Super common, and definitely something to watch out for here. And this is a reason that you're not gonna wanna litter out in this area, because it attracts snakes. Along these waterways, it brings out cane breaks, it brings out moccasins, and if you don't want these snakes by your house, the best thing to do is keep your yards and your house clean. Literally, that's the best way to keep these snakes away. If you've got cut grass, if you've got no trash laying around, these snakes will not come by your house, and that's the best way to do that. You can also leave king snakes around, which are a big deterrent to these guys. So if you don't want these guys around your house, which most people don't, most people just want to leave them in the swamp. But if you don't want these guys around your house, just make sure that they're not having a lot of places to hide. Well, this snake is chilling out for us pretty well, so we're gonna go ahead and put it back under this piece of junk. And uh, that's about as good as a moccasin we're gonna find out here in the east. All right, we're gonna put this big western moccasin back under its piece of trash where it lives. There you go. Get under there, you. Go, go. Good moccasin to finish on. Very nice. Well guys, we really hope you enjoyed this video. We spent a lot of time working on this little mini documentary. And as you can see, there are a lot of different shapes, colors, and subspecies of water moccasins. So we really hope that this helped you be able to identify the snake better. And if you did learn something new about the cottonmouth, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more videos just like this in the future. We will see you guys next time.